How do we use it? We use 16 ounces of 7th generation dish liquid in a 5 gallon bucket of water. I got that from Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ready? This is a very complex process. Okay, so it has markings all up and down it, and I think it has, okay, so it's only, oh yeah, it has ounces and milliliters. 16 ounces is two cups, so 16 ounces. Bum, 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 bum. <coughs> That's in our booklet, right? That yeah. is in your booklet. And there's also, sorry, a tree, thank you very much for helping us. Screwed to that tree is both metric, in case you're not familiar with whatever system we use here, and then we have the US system. Is it called the imperial system? Imperial. Okay, so we have imperial on this side, metric on that side, with all of our recipes for all the things that we make. So this is on there, it's also in your student manual. Anyways, 16 ounces of soap into five gallons of water. That's clean, right? So there's two buckets that are labeled as foaming agent. Those are the two buckets that are used for foaming agent. You don't put cement in them. You don't put dirt in them. They're only used for foaming agent. And that way, they remain clean all the time. Um, so anyway. Okay, so now what do we do when we have foaming agent in a five-gallon bucket? I'll show you. It's really, really straightforward. You take it, and you have somebody lift. I'm going to put it in this one because it's already open. Actually, no, I'm not, because this is the example of how it's going to happen. Somebody helps you, and they lift the lid off of the 20-gallon uh, bucket, and they hold it so that it's convenient for you to dump it in. Just a second. Okay, yep. Uh, I don't think that's going to work. You're on the wrong side. And then you pour it in. And one more note about this. When we come back in the morning, after it's been sitting all night, it needs to be stirred inside of there before we start using it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Do you want to continue this explanation, Rafa? Or? No. Okay. You're doing well. <laughs> there's, there's wood underneath it because this this bucket lid has a little uh, block like uh, plastic like thing. A handle. Uh, it's got a little like uh, it's a it's actually a, 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 a cap. Mm. It's got a little cap that can unscrew because this is off of a 55 gallon drum. Okay, so you need to get above that. So exactly. So we had we wanted to get up above that in order to um, in order to what? Make it flat. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Really quick, I want to say that I am not weird and I don't have OCD, but I would really like it if every time we're done with these buckets. All right. So we have two pails for water, right? Mm -hmm. There's this little one and there's this big one, and I don't care if it's dirty inside of there, but I don't want cement inside of it. I do care if it's dirty inside of this one. So. You can put the you can put if you put them together like this. I don't know. It takes up less space, and then dirt's never going to get into this one off of the bottom of a bucket. Okay, that is kind of weird, but anyways, thank no, you. It's not a <laughs> Onward. All right, I'm here to hopefully make sure our load is good. And dump, 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 dump. 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 Here we go. Okay, so dump measuring in. foam. This is a two-person job, and here are all the steps. So first of all. You need to make sure that, just pretend like you didn't see that. Because I don't know who put that in, like there's only one guy that does manufacturing, that's me, but I don't know what happened. It was in shipping. Yeah, exactly, it was the postman. Uh, okay, so what happens when you make foam? First of all, make sure that there's soap inside. Second of all, make sure that you have electricity and make sure that you have an air compressor. A note about the air compressor. The air compressor needs to be able to pump uh, 2.5 CFM at 90 PSI. So that's weird. I'm going to say it again. 2.5 CFM, which means cubic feet a minute, at 90 PSI, which is 90 pounds per square inch. And this one says it right on the front of it. Mm -hmm. I'll tip it so you can see it. Yeah, most of them, actually, some of them don't, but most of them will say, okay, so this one, for example, is 4.8 at 40 and 3.7 at, oh, hey, that says something, S CFM. Anyways, 3.7 at 90 PSI. So, so you'll be able to find it if you buy a compressor, you'll be able to find it. And so both of these compressors are $99 compressors and they both, they both do the job. So just so you know, it's, there's affordable options. You could probably get one for even cheaper from Harbor Freight, but it might not last, last as long. Don't get a Harbor Freight compressor. Okay, no. there you go. All right, so settling that matter. What do you do when you use this little dragon? The first thing you have to do is prime the pump, which priming the pump means sucking water out of the bucket and getting it into the pump and in the system before the air goes on because if the air is on it's gonna it's not gonna let the water come in so how do you prime the pump you remove the air compressor and then cover this uh quick release hole so water doesn't come out of it turn on the pump until water comes out of the foam once which hold it up a little higher until you see that and then 
Connect the air compressor. For anybody that doesn't know, how do you connect a quick connect air compressor? Pull back. Pull you pull back like this, and then you push like the go tomorrow, and then let go, and it sticks. Okay. And what we're going for is 100 grams per quart container. Um, so basically, we'll fill this quart container up with foam, and then we'll put it on the scale, and we'll find out how much it weighs, and then we'll adjust our air pressure based on what it weighs. Before, up, before, up to make it lighter, down to make it heavier. More air equals lighter foam, less air equals heavier foam, yes. Okay, and before we start weighing, we put our scale, obviously turn on the scale, put the cup on the scale, tear it. So when this, the cup's sitting on there, it reads zero. So we're, we know that we're only measuring... The cup. Yes. Uh, and sometimes you have to push that button more than once, the SPS. You know what's the best is to put the cup on the scale before you even turn it on, and then turn it on and it automatically tears. What's the weight again ratio? 100 grams per liter. Or, sorry, 100 grams, grams per quart. Is that in our book too? That's in your book. I'm going to go for it as heavy as I can and staying in that, in that um, margin. Um, Shouldn't it always produce the same weight of foam with the same pressure? No, because if it's cold or if there's it's really humid or if it's been sitting in the sun, it's different. Depending, depending on your surroundings. Yeah, it would be really nice. It's usually between 60 and 80 PSI will get you to where you need to be, but it's always like micro adjustments in order to get exactly what you want. Further questions? How precise do you need to be on your weight of foam? Uh, I mean, pretty precise. You know, usually I say within um, 90 to 100, and I'm shooting for like heavier side of 90 because I feel like that's gonna produce the best results here. Um, for this climate, when you say for Uh, yeah, basically, yes. Um, okay, so when we do this, what's going to happen is I'm going to be in charge of the foam wand and the switch, and I'm going to turn on the foam wand and let it run for like three seconds, and then Rafa is going to take his cup, fill up his cup, take it away, and then I'll turn the foam wand off. So when the thing is powering up, and when it's powering down, we're not putting the foam into the cup, because when it's powering up and it's powering down, we get a different weight of foam than when it's at full power. Great. So hang on. I, I think this pressure is going to be too low, so I'm going to adjust it before you start putting stuff in. Okay. It really pumps up the foam. Yeah. No, 74. 74. Okay, so it's 74. Do I need to go more away? Oh, he answered. Okay, cool. Everybody heard that? Less, less air makes heavier foam. So I'm going down. And this knob is really awesome because it says plus and minus on it. So if you're like, I don't know, naturally, you can look and say, okay, a little bit less air. And a pretty small adjustment makes a, makes a significant change <laughs> oftentimes. Okay, so you said less air makes heavier, heavier foam. foam. Heavier foam. <laughs> See, I was standing by the help and just didn't work. 88. 88. In there. Okay, so it's closer, but not quite. So I'm going to go even a little bit lighter. Uh, sorry, a little bit uh, heavier, so less air. Did you say you have to calibrate every day is different? Um, even as the temperature changes? Yes, yes. And this is a damp environment. I think it's drier than Hawaii, though, because my lips are chapped. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's really Ooh, I like the way that this looks. Okay. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 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 What does that oh, take? Right now? It's just it's just uh, uh, I think I want to go with that. Yeah, I'm on it. Okay. Okay. And then, you, yeah, if you want to chop it out and then now the 105 thing, is not too heavy. Back into that. Oh, we're dumping it back in now. Uh, well, I guess when we when we can when we can. Not right now. Steve, how much is that? How much was that cup? 105. Oh, that was 105. Question. And so I'm going to go with that. Yes. Is any, have, is any weight too heavy? Um, not really, but at some point you're going to start just wasting foaming agent. Because if you have like, if it's 200 grams per quart, then you're going to use a shitload of, yeah, exactly. Um, wow, I'm really glad that the sun came out. So, any other questions surrounding what we have talked about thus far? No. Okay. I have a one question. I, I know I, I know I just asked this, but are you gonna have to calibrate this again, like in like in a couple hours? Uh, so yeah, if the sun's shining on it.
then it's a good idea to calibrate it. And also, especially when you're getting out a new one, it's a good idea to check it every couple batches uh, just to make sure that, that it's on point. And then after it's, after it's been going for a few days and you feel confident in the machine, then you're like, okay, I can run this for two hours and I know that it's gonna be good. But if you turn it on in the morning, calibrate it in the morning and make um, mortar, next time you come back an hour later, it's a good idea to double check it. Oh. So yes, calibrate it as often as okay. you can. Are mortar and bricks the, the same formula? No. Mortar and bricks are not the same formula, no. Um, the concentrate mix. Yes. We're making mortar. No, we're no, making air creep blocks right now. Okay. So Mike was just telling me that, okay, right, when you come back to this, you mm. want to mix it up because the soak will settle. So like, mm -hmm. you can mix it up at the beginning of the day, and then the beginning of the next day, mix it up again. You mix it up with the wand? You mix it up so, with, uh, yeah, with your oh, hand, with okay. the wand, with whatever. And you make the soap, and then, uh, and then you leave it? Yeah, and then you just put you put it inside there. So the reason why we have a 20 gallon bucket is because it takes about three gallons of foaming agent to fill up to make um, one batch of air creep. And so these buckets are big enough to have 20 gallons inside of them. So what is that? Divided by three is like six. So you can make six batches of air creep basically with one full bucket. 